Okay, this is a video I want to do since very long time, and it's about how to make microfluidics. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you can check this video up here. Five years ago, we developed a method for making microfluidics in a very simple, easy and cheap way, in which you just need some ABS, the PDMS and some acetone. So, the idea, the general idea is that you put some ABS in uncured PDMS, you cure it and then you dissolve the ABS with acetone. And in this method you can make a lot of 3D uh, microfluidics and also very intricate section, very intricate microfluidics. The method is very easy, it has been used multiple times by different people, but every week I get an email asking some question on the method, so I want to make a video for explaining practically everything, or at least the most frequently, the frequently asked questions. So, let's go! First of all, how to prepare PDMS. You naturally pick up your PDMS, you put it in a cup, and then you put your cross-linking agent. The standard is 10 to 1, so 10 parts of PDMS and one part of curing agent. Then you mix it very, very well for at least 5 or 10 minutes, and then you degas it. The degassing part is for removing most of the air bubble trapped in PDMS, so your microfluidics will look clean and there are no bubbles in the PDMS. The second most asked question is usually, my ABS doesn't dissolve in acetone. So I prepare my microfluidics, I leave it in acetone, but then nothing happens. And unfortunately, this is something we saw in the last couple of years. So, producers of plastic start putting other polymers inside the ABS. So, the ABS is not pure and then it doesn't dissolve anymore. As a rule of thumb, we found that the cheapest the ABS, the better it is to dissolve in acetone. So, if you are undecided, buy the cheapest ABS that you can find on the market. And naturally, the easiest thing that you can do for checking it is just pick up some piece of ABS, throw it in acetone and check if it dissolves. If it dissolves, then you are ready to go. If not, just buy another brand of ABS. Easy peasy. Then, how to make the microfluidics design. This method was born for be used with 3D printer and ABS, so naturally the first things should be you can 3D print it. If you can design, then you can just 3D print it in ABS and use it as it is. But there are some other methods, let's see. For example, you can just extrude the material through the nozzle and you can have different sizes. So for example, if you are using a 0.6 mm nozzle, you will have roughly a 0.6 mm channel, but you can also go for the 250 or 1 mm. So I'm in this case, I'm just extruding the material, I'm cutting the different lines, and then I let them cool down. Once I have my extruded filament in the diameter that I want, then I can just use a soldering iron at lowest possible temperature for making my design. So I'm just using the heat for shaping the channel that I want. This is important because if you just bend the ABS and then put it in the oven in PDMS, it will go back on its initial state. So you want to melt a little bit for giving the proper shape of your channel. So also in this case, I'm just warming it up to 100, 120 degrees and then I pick up my filament and just I make some curves. Once it melts, then it will stay in that position even in PDMS and in the oven. And this is what you want to have. And many people ask how we can manage to make the coil microfluidic device. In this case, I'm still using the same um, soldering iron. I just make the coil on top of a cold soldering iron, then I turn on the heat and I wait until it 
gets the shape that I want. In this case, it's it's a coil. When it melts, then I keep the ABS in the same position and I turn off the soldering iron. I wait a little bit that everything is cooled down and I have my final shape. There is yet another method and it's using a cutter. So you can buy those flat sheets of ABS and you can just use a cutter for making your design. I'm using a Cricut, so I just design my microfluidics. Then I attach the ABS foil on the Cricut build plate. Let's call it build plate attach it properly and then I just put it in the machine for cutting. This is just a normal cutting machine, nothing special here. Once it's finished I can remove my build plate, I can detach the single channels and here you have your ABS channels and then you can go on with the same method. You put it in PDMS, you cure it and you remove it with acetone. Then, how to make inlet and outlets if you didn't print them? It's still possible and there are a couple of possibilities, a couple of options. So, you can use acetone for fusing two different ABS. So, I have a line here, I'm using a little bit of acetone and then I'm just pushing it on the microfluidics or the one that will be the microfluidics. You can see, it's attached now. I can do the same things for the outlet, I'm picking up a little bit of ABS, I use acetone, dissolve it a little bit and then fuse together with the design. You need to wait 5 or 10 minutes for all the acetone to evaporate and then you can use this design for making the microfluidics. For the second one, we have already a microfluidics inside, so the ABS part inside the PDMS cured, but no inlet or outlet. So how to do it in this case? You can use what it's called a biopsy punch puncturer. So this is something for puncturing something um, cylindrical, and then you can remove the PDMS by pressing the button here. So I align the puncturer with my design, I press it down for cutting the PDMS until I hit the ABS. Then I twist it a little bit, I remove it and then I press down for removing the cylinder of PDMS. And now I have my inlet. Those punctures are coming in different sizes, so if you have different tubing you can buy one that it's 1mm, one that it's 0.8mm or bigger sizes. For the outlet it's practically the same things, I just push it down until I reach the ABS part, I twist it and then I remove this cylinder of PDMS. And that's it, I now have my inlet and outlet. I just throw it in acetone, I will dissolve the ABS and I will have my final microfluidic device. What if you want to have a perfectly flat design, for example for microscopy, you don't want to hang the ABS in the PDMS so that it can shift, but you want to have something completely flat. In this case, you put a little bit of PDMS in your Petri dish and you wait until everything is flat and there are no bubbles in the petri dish. Then you put this in the oven and you wait for five, from 5 to 10 minutes, but this really depends on the oven and on the temperature of the oven. After a while you start checking if the PDMS start curing, so just poke the PDMS and check if it's liquid or it's becoming a little bit more solid. What we want to achieve here is something that it's not fully cured, but it's also not liquid anymore. So 
So you can see that during time, at least 7, 10 minutes, this is the consistency that you want to get. So it's very sticky, it's not fully cured, and this is what you want to have. You can see here that the PDMS is super sticky, but it's not completely cured. This means that if I put something on top, it will not sink down and it will be stuck on the PDMS. For example, I have my design, I now put it in there. I push it down a little bit for making a good contact with the PDMS and then I pour more PDMS on top. In this way I know that my design is going to be completely flat, will not have bubbles on the bottom part and I can cure PDMS on top. So the trick is to have something sticky but not completely cured. If it's completely cured, if the bottom part is completely cured, it will not attach on the PDMS that you put on the top. So you want to have sticky, put your design, put some more PDMS on top and then throw it in the oven again. Once it will be cured, you will have your design that it's flat, doesn't have bubble and it's perfect. This is your final design. Now just throw it in acetone and it's done. Then, last but not least, and probably the most asked question ever, is how long it will take for dissolving my design. And this is really difficult to answer because it depends on how long is your design, how thin is your design, how much ABS you have in there, and by a lot of different variables. I'm leaving this part here as um, in real time, so you can check in real time how long it will take if you just put a little bit of pressure. So in the original part, we say that you can leave it in acetone overnight and it will work, but you can do also something very fast. So I have my design. I don't have the inlet and the outlet anymore because I pulled the strings out and now I'm just using a syringe for pushing some acetone through. So you just need to use a syringe without the needle. You need to have a little bit of pressure on the design and you start pushing the acetone through. You can see that after a few seconds, I already breach the design and some acetone is pushing out. You can see here. And once you are at this point, you just keep pushing and you will have your clean design in less than 10 minutes. So it's just a matter of having the first flow of acetone that start dissolving your design and it will be easier with time because the more material you remove, the easier will be to push acetone through. So you can have a full design probably in less than 10 minutes. But again, it depends on how long is your design, if you can push it through or not. But this is doable in a few minutes. But then again, maybe it's the end of the day, maybe you're just lazy, you can just throw it in acetone, leave it overnight there and the next morning will be most of it dissolved, you just need to push the rest out. Easy peasy. And here you have them. The frequently asked question about this method. It's really easy, it's simple, you can do practically at home, if you buy stuff from Amazon and now you can do microfluidics everywhere, I just want to answer some of the questions that I get multiple times. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you are making microfluidics, or if not, that you will make them in the future, because it's very easy, nice and doable. See you next time.